I want to bring in neurosurgeon Dr. Betsy Grunch for her insights here. Doctor, good morning to you. Thank you so much for taking the time. I mean, this is one of the most legendary football players of our time. In your eyes, what's the likelihood that the sport is the catalyst for his diagnosis? I think what we know about Parkinson's disease is that there is a epidemiological relationship between the development of Parkinson's disease and head trauma. I think there have been studies that link the two like the study that you guys quoted earlier. And what we think may be the cause is that when you sustain a head injury or a concussion, it could potentially damage those cells in the brain called the microglia that help our brain heal from injury. So if those cells over time get damaged from repeated head trauma, you can have decreased ability in the brain to heal itself to uh, get rid of damaged brain cells and to get rid of misfolded proteins like those that lead to neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. And you talk about that repeated trauma. I mean, he has said he only knows of four concussions but thinks that it was likely thousands of them. He said, if ringing in the ears and seeing stars means you've had a concussion, then I think I've had thousands of them. How might Parkinson's really progress in someone who's had thousands of concussions? Like I said, I mean, what we think happens is there's a second, there's a primary injury whenever you sustain that concussion, which gives you the symptoms like ringing in the ear, seeing stars, like he mentioned, he may have had thousands of those types of injuries over his career. And then over time, the brain will develop secondary injury. And that's when those neuroinflammatory changes happen in the brain that can lead to these degenerative changes. And so really the role of science is hoping to develop drugs that may help prevent that secondary injury. Mm -hmm. And you know, Dr. Grunch, you must have parents come to you all the time and ask, hey, should I let my son play football? Should I let my daughter play this contact sport? What, what do you tell parents right now, especially when we're seeing headlines like this uh, from Brett, Brett Favre to a tongue of Iloa? What's your advice? Right. I mean, I think that the link that's starting to develop over time and all these studies that are coming out relating these degenerative changes of the brain and um, other things to, you know, head trauma, boxing, soccer, football, just leads you to, you know, think twice about whether or not you want to put your kids in these sports. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what more do you think needs to be done to monitor head injuries moving forward? The relationship of athletic trainers and the awareness of these types of injuries is extremely important. I think we're getting better and better at that and recognizing the symptoms and being more cognizant of these symptoms on the field and at a professional level. But I really think educating these trainers on the field and more you know, younger high school, college uh, sports is, and even elementary is just really, really important. Yeah, well, I know a lot of pro players are thinking hard right now. A lot of parents at home are thinking long and hard right now about what to let their kids uh, do and, and not do. Dr. Betsy Grunch, a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you.